I met my now husband in a failed OGRS OS made us have. Six years ago, my husband at the time came home to me and told me he wanted to swing with this woman at college and her boyfriend. I was shocked and heartbroken. I told him why and if he didn't want me anymore he could have just said so. He said it wasn't it at all he just wanted an adventure. Turns out later he just wanted to screw that new lady. Her f-tish is to have her boyfriend watch. I agreed because I was pathetic and I loved my husband plus we had a six mo baby at home. We met this other couple and I sensed that the guy wasn't into it at all. We met two times before the actual day. On the second time the boyfriend and I confessed that we weren't really into this. We texted the whole next day and came to the conclusion that we might as well have fun. When the actual day came, the boyfriend and I spent more time on each other and basically we forgot about our SOS until the girlfriend started yelling at us to stop because this is not how it's supposed to happen. To be honest I had no idea how things were supposed to happen I was just trying my best plus her and my husband probably just wanted an excuse to sleep together. My husband wasn't happy either and he started accusing me of cheating. I asked for divorce there and then. Have you ever asked for divorce naked in an OG? Next day the boyfriend asked me out and I said yes. We resumed what we started the previous day. And it was electric. I have been with him ever since. Married for four years. We try to avoid the how did you guys meet question. Sometimes we say, through mutual friends. Edit. I guess they got mad because when they were picturing the OG it was focusing on them. My ex-husband is out there dating. He still says I cheated on him. The girlfriend is married now. She still hates me. My husband and I have decided we never want to try anything outside of monogamy before filing for a divorce first. Story 2, when your ex tells you to move out while she's on a work trip, because the guy she cheated on you with is moving in, you get very creative moving out. I did this to an ex who asked me to move out while she was on a work trip and told me she was coming back with her new boyfriend, we were still together when she left. I got these little noisemakers, battery powered ones the size of a quarter that emit sounds at just the right volume that you aren't sure if you really heard it, so quiet that two people could be sitting in an average sized room and while one can barely hear it the other wouldn't hear a thing. They last ages and fit perfectly in light fixtures and in wall outlets. I got a box of 20 of them for like $100 on eBay, and got so creative all over the house, her car, I even hid them in a boat her father got her rich family and she grew up sailing. Now these little bastards make a noise at complete random intervals, could be minutes, could be hours, could take a whole day off. They cycle noises like children laughing, a dying breath as they called it, a whistle, scratching noises, some other ones I can't remember but you get the idea. It was so unpredictable it was near impossible for someone to just figure it out. Months go by, I get a new place, get my life back up. Now we had a few friends in common and one of them I kept up with. They were kinda sour about how she ended things but they had grown up together and kept up the friendship loosely talking and catching up on occasion. I never really asked about her, but one day we get to talking and he's wanting to prank some friends on a camping trip so I tell him about the noisemakers. As I'm telling him about them he slowly starts making this face, like he's gradually losing his asset. He's got this huge grin on his face and asks me you put these in excess it didn't you? And when I admit he starts laughing hysterically. Turns out her new boyfriend had only lasted a few months, and had left telling her that he couldn't handle whatever was going on with them and their mental states. Turns out for a while they had both heard things and sometimes only one would hear them, 
which gave the illusion that something really ducked with them was going on in their heads at different times. They couldn't figure it out and eventually he wanted out completely, and having run down all the crazy list of acid people who are hearing voices would think ended it believing he had been infected with some brain worm the government was putting in vaccines or something like that. It was amazing, I hadn't expected to hear anything about it. I rode that train for weeks. When it went away I got another hit of that high. She moved out, told her parents, she didn't want the house and to give it to her brother or sell it. Wouldn't tell them why. I always tell people who ask about her that I hold no grudge, and don't tell them the part where I totally ducked with her so bad I overshot the got her backstage and hit the blissful state of satisfied with my work. My wife knows this story by heart because it's her favorite one to tell. Redditor's reactions and update in the comments. Story 3 after. Redditor 1, for anyone who wants one of these little gadgets, Google Anoyatron. Redditor follow up, my brother bought 3-4 of these and hid them in our lounge, we easily found all of them because he wasn't good at hiding them, we on the other hand were very good at hiding them went to his bedroom, behind a poster on the wall, inside a packet of cards, he never found any of them and couldn't sleep for a couple of weeks before we told him where they were. Redditor 2, update, so after I posted this comment some people reached out to me to see if I could tell them more about the product. I couldn't but coincidentally I found one of mine and it's called the Evil Tron. I decided to put it in my mom's house. It has five sound choices and I set it on a guy who loudly whispers, Hey, can you hear me and put it in the detritus that sits by her kitchen phone. Now we wait I thought to myself. I didn't hear anything from her that night but the next day she texts me, Grandma's hearing aids are glitching. They're chirping non-stop and it's driving her crazy. She's almost in tears. This gave me pause but there's no way the device could impact her hearing aids I'm sure so I don't say anything. The next day mom calls and casually mentions she's made an appointment to get the aids checked and it's only going to cost her $100 for the checkup, but the aids aren't under warranty so if they need fixing, it's going to be expensive. Oh crap. I tell her well I need to let you know something. I'm sure they're unrelated but on the off chance. And I confess I put an evil tron in her house. There's a long pause then she bursts out laughing. The BTCH had pulled a double cross on me. She found it the first night and played my ass like a fiddle for two days. Good on you mama. Good on you. Original reply below. I sent one of these to my BFF who was stationed in Japan. It's called an Anoyatron sold by ThinkGeek. Anywho, he put it in his chief's office on the inside lip of a metal filing cabinet they have a magnet so you can stick them anywhere. Then he left on a two-week engagement. When he got back he heard the stories. Chief had IT come in and check all electronics. He had maintenance come in and check all appliances. Finally, he lost his asset and starting throwing all the furniture out in a hallway in a fit of anger. Only then was he able to rid himself of the infuriating sound. My BFF never ever told anyone he did it. Reddit a follow up, I did this to a supervisor many years ago. Several co-workers were in on it and couldn't hear what he was talking about, while other co-workers weren't and agreed they also heard it. He had the maintenance guy pulling down the ceiling tiles before the responsible one told him what was up. I got caught because I couldn't keep a straight face, but never did give up my cohorts. Edit to add this guy was fond of pranks like jumping out at people or moving and hiding their supply carts way on the other side of the building so they had to hunt them down, so he totally had it coming. Op comment want to be clear on a couple things that came up in the other post. In some ways I'm not too proud of this, it was a long time ago and I was in a really dark place, 
The whole event just tipped me and I responded in a no FCKS to give state the best I could, by just being a menace. She also did it all through a short impersonal email that just sucked ass. I'm not saying that's all an excuse, just some context. Also, the house was purged of the devices after she left. I let her brother in on it because they weren't close at all and he lived with their mom most his life. We were close because we gamed together and he was able to find all but two of them. He ended up using them for other pranks for a long time. Peas, as far as the original noise chips I got they were a very simple board build I got from some guy on eBay ages ago, so I can't track down a direct link and I don't think he is on eBay anymore. I'm seeing a lot of references to one called the Annoyatron on ThinkGeek and it sounds like it was probably the influence behind the ones I got or vice versa. I encourage anyone who wants them to hunt on eBay or even Etsy. They were pretty simple, and I can imagine someone out there still makes them. Also I would say see if you can't make them yourself. There might be some DIY guides for it out there. I'll see what else I can find. PS2, apart from being the best console ever made, I found something that honestly in my opinion trumps the ones I had. This is a small unit that lets you record 10 seconds of your own audio. Which is honestly pretty cool because you could make the sounds and voices more personal to your victim. Fun delivery a noise hidden recordable annoying sound prank gag joke. Story 3, he ruined my sister's only birth experience so I made sure he'd never forget her. Obligatory apology for formatting as I'm on mobile. Kinda my revenge, kinda my sisters, both of us really proud. This is gonna be long so TL, DR at bottom. Here's our cast. My sister we'll call her Sarah for the story sisters XBF Paul XBF's new wife Jane XBF's parents Mr. and Mrs. Doe oldest brother Zeke our parents and me. When I was 14 and my oldest sister, Sarah, was 22 we found out that she was pregnant with Paul, her boyfriend of 4 years. They immediately got engaged, and they were really happy. For a time. Sarah had a horrible pregnancy, about 16-18 weeks in the wonder of creating a human life evaporated within her. She developed hyperemesis which if you don't know is really bad morning sickness, she was constantly in pain, she developed gestational diabetes, and just all around hated the experience. Around this time Paul, the then fiancé, started getting sick of the complaining, I believe the argument was your body is built to do this, it can't be that bad. Sarah was due around Valentine's Day and Paul's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Doe, were very excited, both about the grandkid and the fact that he could be born on a holiday. She was very against that and really really hoped that her son wouldn't be born on a holiday, even one as small as Valentine's Day her birthday sometimes falls on Easter and she hates it because it might make him feel that his day isn't very much about him. Well, Mrs. Doe says something like well if you name him Valentine or Valentino then that'll make the day even more special to him. Again, sister hated the idea. She thought it was tacky, he'd be bullied for it, and just really didn't like the name Valentino. Paul loved it, but agreed to go with a more average name like Daniel or Jared. Fast forward to February, and she was ready to get this over with. Sarah had officially been put on bed rest because while standing or walking her blood pressure took unexpected spikes and dips. I look back now and goodness do I feel bad for her. She was doing her best to avoid giving birth on Valentine's Day because, again, she didn't want him born on a holiday. Unfortunately, births happen when they happen and that baby was going to come on Valentine's Day whether she wanted him to or not. I remember waiting out in the waiting room with my dad, brothers, and Paul who couldn't stand to be in the delivery room because it was gross. 
I was so mad that he could have gone in but wouldn't because he thought my sister was gross while giving birth, whereas I had to stay outside because I was too young to go in with my mom and other sister. Dad went home with the youngest two brothers while the oldest, Zeke, stayed to watch me because I refused to leave. Sixteen hours after Sarah went into labor my little nephew was officially part of the family on the evening of Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, Sarah was not okay. She had to have an emergency caesarean section and while doing the operation discovered that the back of her uterus facing her spinal cord had a very large and very severe thankfully non-cancerous tumor. When I say large I mean it was twice the size of a standard uterus. The doctors were shocked and didn't understand why nobody had noticed it on an ultrasound. It accounted for her severe back pain, and blood pressure issues. The doctors immediately went in for more surgery to remove the tumor, but sadly ended up having to perform a full hysterectomy. This meant that my nephew would be Sarah's only child. Now while Sarah was in for surgery Paul was taking care of everything baby related to make sure his son was okay. In my 14 year old self's memory I remember him being suitably distraught, but I didn't really pay him much mind and spent my time in the waiting room with my mother and other sister. Zeke, however, wanted to be a good future brother-in-law and make sure that Paul was okay. He found Paul filling out the baby paperwork on his own looking in my brother's words like he had not a single worry in his mind. Zeke asked why Paul didn't wait for Sarah to fill out the paperwork as she should have been put of surgery within the hour, and Paul said that he just wanted her to get her rest and heal. That checked out with Zeke, as he was 16 and didn't know any better at the time. Now I know what you're probably thinking. No, he wouldn't. He knows how much she hates that name. And still, she'd need to sign the paperwork too. My fellow peoples of Reddit, I regret to inform you that Paul forged Sarah's signature on the paperwork and waited until she was out of surgery to hand said paperwork over. My sweet nephew, that was born on Valentine's Day, was named Valentino on his first official birth certificate. I still to this day don't know why Paul and his family were so insistent about the name. He had even picked out a different one with my sister. And before you ask, no he was never brought up on forgery charges because his parents were witnesses to her signing the papers, even though they only got there at the last minute. So Sarah dumped him and got her son's name changed a month later. She was willing to do split custody with him because that's her son's father and she wants the kid to know him, but Paul vanished and she never heard anything back, which seemed weirdly out of character to us. Until a mutual friend on Facebook was tagged in his wedding pictures six months later. Paul had apparently started cheating on her not long after she got pregnant. Sarah was livid but there wasn't much she could do so she filed for child support and continued to live her best life. Until six years later. This is where the revenge starts, my friends. So Sarah has been a single mother for the past six years, and has been amazing at it. At this point in my career I've been a hairdresser for about eight months at our local great. Clips. I'm working one day and who is seated before me but Jane, Paul's wife, herself. I take her back for a trim and she clearly has no idea who I am. That adds up because a mutual friend that still keeps in contact with Paul said that Jane doesn't know a thing. She has no idea about Sarah, that she was the other woman, or that Paul actually has a kid that he's been infrequently paying child support for. She's in the dark on it all. I told myself not to be an ass and treat her like a normal customer, which I did. Now at this point, Jane was heavily pregnant, so a lot of our conversation was about that. She loved being pregnant but it was hard, her husband was so unsympathetic big shocker, 
and she was due in ten weeks and they still hadn't picked out a name for their baby girl. Ladies and gentle peoples, this was my chance. I asked what kind of name she was looking for and she said I want something unique and unusual, but not ridiculous like Brain Clay you know the ones I'm talking about and Paul had suggested so many already and she didn't like any of them. So I, conniving little weasel I am, said what about Sarah? My sister's name isn't actually Sarah she was named after an older family member that passed not long after she was born, but there was no female equivalent for his name so our parents created one. It's a beautiful name and just what Jane was looking for. She loved it, she stuck by it, and I found out by stalking her Facebook months later that she had put her foot down about it and that was their daughter's name. Now Paul has a daughter with his ex's name to remind him every day about her and to also remind him to pay his child support. Little nephew is 10 years old now with a new name and no contact with his biological father, though we do still sometimes call him Val as a family nickname. He likes it but doesn't want to bring it to school so it's staying a family nickname. Sarah pretends to hate when we call him that, in a joking way. As long as he likes it she doesn't have a problem with it. And she's seeing a new guy who's really great, and like a father to Val. Redditor's reactions. Redditor 1, this is so fabulous. And he can't really say anything without revealing what an ashole he is. Redditor 2, wow that guy is a cunt. Good riddance, also I love the revenge because it is one that will stick. Redditor 3, this is truly one of the best pro-revenge tales I've read on this subreddit. Redditor follow-up, I was trying to figure out what this was leading up to. As soon as Jane started talking about a name, I was like no ducking way. Ha ha. Brilliant. Redditor 4, personally I'd have told her this detailed story about what my sister went through when she was pregnant, referring to him as her boyfriend until the very end, then dropping in his real name. There would have been quite an interesting conversation that night I'd imagine. Redditor 5, this is Shakespearean level pro revenge. Even with all the turn tabling there is still an atomic bomb of a mic drop hanging over the dude's head when if he finds out how the name was planted. Redditor follow up, oh yeah, I just wish one day they all meet, and the new mum says, here's the hairdresser who suggested the name Sarah. Redditor 6, my only concern is that Paul might treat the child badly because the child is named after his ex. I hope the child is safe and healthy. Redditor follow up, guys like Paul would treat any kid, no matter the name badly. From this story it seems like he's the type of guy who calls caring for his own kid babysitting. Redditor 7, am I the only one who thought op would suggest Valentina?